Now that we have our creature textured, let's export those textures so that we can use them in a real-time application. In this case, we're gonna be using Unity. So the first thing that we'll do is you can export your mesh from Substance Painter. Uh, obviously, we imported this FBX into Painter, and so you can use that FBX if you want, but you can also come up to File and go to Export Mesh. You can see, you can decide whether to apply triangulation. It recommends that you uh, triangulate your model when exporting. So we'll go ahead and export this with the default options. And I'm gonna actually drop these into the Unity project. And so let's change this from an OBJ to an FBX. And then I'm going to click into the Unity project under Assets. And I have a Models folder that I'm gonna drop this into. This will be included, the Unity project will be included in your project files. But really, if you need to, you can just come, go in and grab the FBX from there, or you can use the FBX we imported into Painter as well. So I'm gonna call this something like Future Export, and putting it into the Models folder, we'll go ahead and save. All right, now we need to export our textures. So right now, you can see we don't really have textures per se. So if we look on the body, we don't have a color map. We don't have a roughness map per se. We're looking at a bunch of different layers that are all working together to create the look that we have. Now, if we look in here, we kind of can see the result of all of that. But what we wanna do is export actual texture maps that we can plug in to whatever application we're using, in this case, Unity, to make sure that our model looks as close as possible to what we have here. So let's go ahead and export those. We'll go to File, Export Textures. All right, so we've got a few tabs here. We've got our list of exports, which will show uh, the different exports that we create. The output templates, which is where we can look at the actual templates and see what files and maps are associated with each of those templates. So for instance, this PBR metallic roughness is kind of a basic uh, template. And so you can see we have base color, roughness, metallic, normal, height, and emissive. In this case, we've added emissive. We also, if you went through the film course, we had the Arnold template. But what we want to do is use Unity. And if you come down to Unity, there's the HD render pipeline and universal render pipeline. And then also it's split into metallic versus specular workflow. Now, if you look at all of these, you can see there's some differences. So if we look at the universal and the HD render pipeline, you'll see that we only have four maps. And you might be thinking, well, I don't get that because we have a lot more channels that we need to output. So what's happening is we have the base map, which contains the color here, and then also the opacity in the alpha map. And then inside of this one, which if we come back over here and come to the right, which is called mask map, and this actually contains a lot of different information. So in the red channel, we have the metallic information because it's again, black and white, grayscale. In the green channel, we have the mixed ambient occlusion. And then in the alpha, we have the roughness or glossiness. It's kind of an inverse relationship. And then we have the normal map and the emissive. And so we have a lot of information contained in one file versus some of these other ones will have, we'll have them uh, separated into their own texture maps. So I'm just gonna choose the Unity Universal Render Pipeline. You can see the maps that it's going to create here. You can also see the kind of uh, texture file that you're gonna create with these. Here you have a list of the in different input maps and converted maps and mesh maps that you can use. And you just drop those over onto these different texture maps that you wanna create. So we're gonna stick with the, the existing template. And then if we go over to settings, we can see that we can click all of these different texture sets. If, for instance, we only wanna output particular texture sets, we can define those here. We can also define an output directory. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. And I wanna go into that Unity project. And I'm gonna put it into Assets, Textures. And we're gonna select that as the folder. So I'm gonna put mine there. If you're creating yours, you can put them wherever you want, but you wanna be able to access them from Unity and pull those in to your project. All right, our output template, we wanna switch. And we wanna choose our Unity and let's choose our uh, Universal Metallic. Go ahead and leave everything else as is. And then all we have to do from this point is go ahead and hit export. Now it's gonna to flip to that tab and show you as those different textures export for the different texture sets, you're gonna see those here. It'll show you the exported files that have been created. All right, you can see all those separated based on the texture set and then also what they're called. 
Okay, if you see the word albedo, that's referring to like the diffuse uh, color texture, the base color. All right, so we'll go ahead and quit out of there. We'll make sure to save this because if there are any issues, you can always come back, re-export your textures using a different uh, format or a different bit depth and things like that. All of your data, the important stuff is in this painter file and you can always out output for another application. So uh, for instance, you're using Unity right now, but let's say later on you actually want to use this project in Unreal. You don't have to change anything here. You just have to re-export your texture files to work with Unreal or with Arnold or with V-Ray or whatever it is that you're working with. So we'll go ahead in the next lesson and finish this whole thing up by going into Unity and bringing in our new objects and our new texture maps and setting up materials. So we'll do that next.